when people of a Western or practical or scientific bent of mind are first introduced to Hinduism or Eastern philosophy in general, they are often specifically warned about images such as this. This is a 19th century representation from Rajasthan of the four top chakras, which are centers of energy in what is known as the subtle body. There is a great deal in Indian philosophy, Hinduism, Eastern thinking in general, that is bizarre, at least to the Western mind, and difficult for us to understand. And I don't think anything can be more bizarre to the Western mind than this kind of thing. The way I approach Tantra, which is the form of Eastern philosophy that I'm currently most interested in, is to advise people from the start to not forget the culture and the mindset in which these images are embedded. Specifically, the central role that experience plays in everything. Karma. Karma is the individual's experience of anything and the effects that result from such experiences. The subtle body is an attempt, in my opinion, to map human physical experiences, as it were, from the inside. Imagine, if you will, an actual version of a Cartesian theater. The best example, as people have pointed out before, is from the movie, yes, the movie, um, Men in Black, where you see a tiny alien inside a uh, very sophisticated robot that is acting as a human being, or actually a, a humanoid alien. I tend to look at images like this as an attempt to see the minds, or to map the minds, experiences inside from the first person's perspective, from the inside. Tantra has attempted to do this, and they have worked out, the, the tantric schools, and there are hundreds, perhaps thousands of them, have worked out complex and often extremely esoteric imagery and theories like this to explain and to map and to discuss the actual experience of the workings of the human body and in particular the workings of the central nervous system from the inside. The Western view tends to always deal with that which can be independently observed and unfortunately experience cannot be independently ob observed. A certain leap has to take place in order for one to understand this stuff, things like this image. An understanding of the point of view when discussing Tantra is absolutely central, as is an understanding of the philosophy that underpins almost all of Eastern thinking in particular karma, experience. How do we map experiences? This is going to take more than one video. Um, as I say, Tantra is probably the most alien branch of Eastern philosophy for the Western mind, and it doesn't help that it deals with things like magic or alleged magic strange things like the kundalini, um, the subtle body, prana, all this kind of thing which the Western skeptical mind simply spits out because it cannot be independently verified. There are plenty of Indian people who will tell you that all of this is an actual accurate representation of forces that actually exist phenomenally. I do not subscribe to that point of view. I believe that these can be approached metaphorically or esoterically or parabolically as in as parables for the experiences 
of existing inside a human body and, um, in a larger sense, as a mind or a soul, if you will, or a consciousness that is somehow embedded in or linked to a physical universe. This sounds dualistic, but it isn't necessarily so. It just starts with a dualism as a point of departure in order to explore. You have to start any exploration from somewhere. I will be attempting to deal with this subject in as clinical and as non-esoteric a, man a manner as is possible. This will not be easy, and I do not have a great deal of faith in my ultimate ability to get the message across here. Here goes anyway. <laughs>